Hello and welcome. My name is E, and we're playing this game. It is Solidus Singularity. That is the name of the game. I have played this, um, but it was two years ago when I played it, and I didn't get very far. Uh, you'll see how far I got. I've gotten, uh, but. Uh, I thought it was an interesting game, and uh, there are interesting pieces about it, so we're going to play it. Uh, and I have Wikipedia here, just uh, so we're going to, you know, Google some things as we as we play, so, as, as to learn some, some things. So, here we have Earth, and we have um, 200 billion units. I think it's like some sort of uh, base pairs, maybe, is the unit. And if I click on this, right, I get more. So I'm harvesting all the all the genetic information from Earth. I can't click on the move. Okay, but um, let's let's dive in. So this is what the um, Earth looks like. So we got some fish here. I think the fish have legs. Uh, and this is the ocean, and we have some fish, and we have some worm things, and um, uh, jellyfish. And then um, this is the microscopic. So we have DNA, uh, and then we have cells, uh, we have eukaryotes and uh, prokaryotes. The prokaryotes in the green, eukaryotes in the purple, some DNA, some proteins. Um, and then this is the um, what we've done so far. So you can see I haven't really, I've just I haven't got to dinosaurs. Dinosaurs I think are the next. Um, next stage so um, here you start out with amino acids so th you know there's a idea of um, protein first membrane first DNA first um, these are the three hypotheses of how life started um, DNA first means that um, DNA was the first uh, molecule that was able to self-reproduce and then everything is based upon that uh, then there's protein first where proteins were able to reproduce and um, then we're creating DNA to store material, and then there's membrane first. Um, I kind of believe that it's kind of a mix between uh, membrane and RNA, um, and RNA sort of like a, with um, some transcription. So in a way, all three, <laughs> you know, a bit of R a bit of proteins, a bit of DNA or RNA, and then it all has to happen in a protective uh, bubble. Uh, where where it's different from other fluids, so uh, you would have to. I think you have to have a bit of all three of those in ingredients to to have life, uh, to get life started. So it's not just uh, one. Okay, anyway. So you have amino acids, DNA, and the prokaryotes. I'm about to sneeze. Nope. <coughs> okay. Because I'm tight. I'm so good looking, right? From Seinfeld. Okay. Then we have viruses. Um, interesting thing about viruses is, you know, most people are like, oh, viruses are bad, and they make us sick, which is true. They do make us sick, and and they can they can um, do do lots of damage. But however, the theory of how we uh, life moved from uh, prokaryotes to eukaryotes is that the um, nucleus inside the eukaryote is this is one of the hypotheses um, is it's actually a virus um, that the um, virus basically engulfed. The entire genome of the prokaryote and became the protective structure for the entire cell and continued to function um, and uh, so that's that's one of the reasons that's one of the that's the hypothesis of how prokaryotes became eukaryotes is through this um, it, it's called endosymbiosis meaning um, uh, and this happened with the mitochondrial where you engulf a organism and it slowly becomes part of the organism um, and so same thing with the virus um, moving to become the nucleus so that's how uh, what's the theory one of the hypotheses of how uh, the um, nucleus was created I say hypothesis because you know there is some evidence to support it however you know um, we just don't know have a lot of information so it could be there's another method explanation that we just don't know about. Right. Um, cytoplasm. We filter feeding. We get sponges. So sponges, I have a love-hate relationship with sponges. Sponges are cool. However, 
um, biologists uh, consider sponges to be the uh, an animal and and to be the first animal and the issue I have with that is what about the plants what about the plants biologist what about the plants and because the the very it's my I find it um, I, I find it uh, enraging that sponges are considered plants yet algae algae are now considered plants but when I was uh, taught uh, algae was not considered a plant and now biologists uh, make the difference between land plants and plants and now algae is considered a plant but not a land plant um, which I think it's dumb to make the distinction between land plants because we don't do the same thing with land animals we don't say Oh, fish, they're so simple because it's a land, it's not a land animal. No, we don't. Um, so I don't, I don't know if sponges should be considered an animal. And that's my controversial take of the day. E's controversial take of the day. Sponges shouldn't be considered animals. Big headlines on the news. Um, yeah. Um, coral is awesome. Coral is so cool. Uh, a coral is related to um, jellyfish. They're like cousins. Coral, jellyfish, and um, hydras. Uh, they're just they're they're just awesome. They're just amazing. They got they got all the sorts of stuff going. What is that? What is that? Oh, okay. So I bought I bought coral. Apparently I didn't have coral before. Sponge is 100% more effective. Coral is a marine invertebrate with a hard calcium carbonate exoskeleton colonies of corals that grow together can create reefs diverse underwater ecosystems that provide a home for many sea creatures okay so we didn't have that before let's see i'm just going to click on all these to see if we didn't have them. so we already have the primordial soup we got the moon going the moon's important one of the um uh hypothesis uh asimov threw this out i don't know how seriously he believed this but um one that he i guess he thought that one of the reasons why there's life on Earth is because of the moon, because the moon creates these tides and creates a mixing um, that could um, help the creation of life. Uh, and then I also want to point out that um, there's other people that believe that... Um... Cool. Okay, I didn't know what that was, but I guess it's quick and I get it more. Um, that, um, you know, there's the uh, spore, you know, oh, what's it called? Um universal spore theory hypothesis which basically um people some people believe that um life didn't wasn't created on earth it was created somewhere else and that uh, conditions in the universe allow or uh, life to move very easily from one planet to the other um and there's some evidence to support that um there's i think just more unknowns with that idea okay and um, we got the solar system we got the milky way we got a home star called the sun. We got planet Earth. We got the pyramid. We got volcanoes. I mean, that's 300% more efficient, effective. Um, calcium dioxide produced by erupting prehistoric volcanoes warmed the Earth and was a major catalyst in making uh, Earth habitable in early stages of development. Cool. Ozone layer, uh, incredibly important. You reduce the uh, amount of UV. Um, yeah. And the cool thing about Earth, too, is that we have a magnetic field. Not all plants, planets have a magnetic field. And that, if we didn't have a magnetic field, we would not have a lot of water. Because the hydrogen would have just been blown off by solar winds. And our magnetic field keeps our hydrogen here. And it allows us to have water. And water is an essential thing for life, for all sorts of things on Earth. To have a, a, a weather system based upon water. All because we have a magnetic field. You don't think, oh, magnetic field, you know, oh, that's lame. Well, no, it's it's extremely important. Okay. 